All right, welcome, welcome. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on what part of the world you're in. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we are here live on our Facebook page uh, for Briona's Consulting Group. And, you know, thanks for joining us. Today, we are joined by Yvonne Casilu. I hope I didn't butcher that too badly. And Samuel Sanchez. And they are here with... Um, Oh, so sorry. <laughs> All right, with, uh, oh God, I am having a brain fart here. Oh my. All right, Why, with Augusta Home Care Recruiting. I am so sorry about right. that. You got it right. <laughs> You're amazing. It's for you. one of those moments where I completely blanked out. All right, so one of what, what we're talking about today is, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about marketing and recruiting. Now, there's a lot of tools in the arsenal when it comes to building a successful home care agency. And, you know, what one of the things that people have heard me say a hundred times over, you know, it's that, you know, people build relationships and relationships are what build your business. So this doesn't just apply in today's world when we're talking about that feet on the ground, going out there, knocking on doors. One of the tools, especially in this post-COVID world that we've had to learn to adapt to and implement in, in our arsenal of growing our agencies is digital marketing, Facebook, social media, you know, pay-per-click, all of this wonderful stuff. And these guys, they're fantastic. They're one of the few agencies that, you know, that I've actually met that not only do they understand the entire digital realm a whole lot better than I do, but they, they also have the unique advantage that they come from the world of home care. They understand all the stuff that you're walking into. They understand the need you know, for proper recruitment, for how to reach these potential clients and caregivers. So you know, before I just keep talking them up, let them uh, introduce themselves a little bit. Welcome, guys. You know, sorry about that slip up a little minute ago. So tell everybody uh, that's watching now, you know, who are you? What's, a, what's Augusta all about? And how do you help them grow? Thanks, Julio. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for the time. I appreciate everybody watching us and learn from us, hopefully. Um, I'm Yvonne Castillo, and I live in Boston. And uh, Sam and I started up Augusta a few months ago. And it was really out of passion of home care, really. Um, and before I go into the details of what we do, why we exist, and we have a free audit that we want to offer you guys, and Sam will show what that is very soon. Um, I have a simple question to ask you. Are you tired of paying too much money for products or services that are not made for home care? And a lot of times these products may be hard to use or may not even deliver the value it's supposed to. So when I joined Care Academy four years ago, um, I really fell in love with the industry. I really like talking to operators, talking to caregivers. I love the mission of home care, what it does. And, um, and at Care Academy, we had the same problem. At that time in 2017, operators were telling me, all these products I'm paying a lot of money for, they don't work. Caregivers don't adopt them. They were made for you know, hospitals or other industries. And I'm kind of forced to use those products. And that's how Care Academy really kicked off, where we really build a product from ground up, listening to caregivers, listening to home care operators, and building a product for home care. Yeah, that is. So then four years. Important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then four years later, I'm like, there's so many problems that can be solving in home care. There's so many things that are not working in home care. And then we talked to a lot of operators, and they told me loud and clear. I just can't recruit enough caregivers. Who, who's seeing that in their business? Yeah, so uh, that's something yeah. uh, very common. And, you know, that we, we do see, I definitely get a ton of questions about that. So that's excellent that your, your research has led, you know, pretty much leading everybody to the same place. Because I was going to solve any other big problem out there in home care. And that came out really loud and clear. And what I'm trying to tell you today also is that we want to build this product from the ground up for home care. And one of the reasons we have this free audit uh, that we're going to provide is that we want to provide you value for your time spending with us, talking to us about how to solve this problem. 
what is the right product, the right software, the right help that you need to recruit the right quality uh, caregivers for your business, right? Um, because care, you know, home care is a high touch and high tech environment, and we need to have a radically different approach from other companies trying to sell your products. <clears throat> so, about me, like I have twenty years of experience building tech businesses. I have a bachelor degree in computer engineering, MBA, and so on. And Sam is with us today, is an expert in Facebook marketing, and I'll let him uh, introduce himself. Thank you for that, <laughs> that nice introduction. Um, yeah, a quick little background about myself is I'm a social media digital marketer for home care and senior care agencies, and have been for five years. And real, my deep roots actually come in this industry is I'm a family caregiver, and I have been for over 10 years. I uh, started being a family caregiver for my maternal grandmother, and now currently I'm caregiving for my great-grandparents as well. So again, it's just, this is what I'm born and raised to do. Uh, my roots run deep, and I have a real deep affinity towards this industry as well. All right. Awesome. Awesome. So let, let's, you know, let's get down to a little bit of the meat and potatoes on of this whole interview. Like, look, we all know, we all actually all have a love-hate relationship with social media you know it, it's it's necessary we we all understand that but the fact is many of us don't even know how to use it okay so tell me like you guys are the experts here why is it so important for me to build a facebook page well um just again to recap it simply put everyone's on facebook caregivers family caregivers they utilize this platform to connect with their family to connect with their friends and to learn more about the agencies they're wanting to apply for. They go through the photos, job postings, content postings, and ultimately they're wanting to see who is running the agency. They want to know the, the operator's attentions. You know, are, are, is this something that's true to your heart? Is this something that you have a deep affinity towards because the caregivers have a deep affinity towards us? You know, it, it takes a, a special person to wake up every day to serve and help someone else you know, conduct their life in the way they want to conduct it. And that's what caregivers are looking for online is to find an agency that can actually present that and showcase that, that it's just, another, it's not just another business venture. It's a deep connection that they have towards this industry as well. Right. All right. So, so now that, you know, we understand why, All right. So how, how does it actually fit in to our overall you know, digital marketing plan. Because I mean, look, we've both been in marketing one aspect or another for a lot of years. All right. So we all know that you got to have a really good solid marketing mix. So we're we're out there beating the street. In the background, we have people that, that are going to be out there working on building our campaigns, getting that that brand recognition out. That, that I don't think a lot of people quite understand how important that brand recognition really is. But now, what role does Facebook, the Facebook business page play in getting that recognition, getting that, you know, fitting into that and overall marketing plan? Like, what, what's your take on that? Yvonne, would you like to ask, answer this one or would you like me to take it? I'll go for it. Okay, so in a sense, your social media presence and overall digital marketing should be perceived as an extension of your real world presence. Mm -hmm. So we all know that how you mentioned, you know, they're on foot door knocking, trying to build up their RPNs, referral provider networks. They're trying to connect, trying to build a presence within their area. And that's fine. But we're in the midst of going from our real world, you know, presence and now referring and relying more of our, on our social presence. Now, this is where you'll be able to utilize, again, how I keep saying real world presence, is the status you have in the community and leverage that to a broader audience that you may not have thought of networking with. And this is the real value in it, is you're able to tap into micro network pools within your service area as well. All right. You want to expand a little bit on that? Like, what do you mean by the micro networks? Now, would you like me to continue to elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, please, please do. Yeah, sorry for getting, keep getting cut out. Um, again, it's just the idea is, you know, when you're building up your referral provider network, you know, you're, you're, you're going door knocking, you're meeting with groups, 
that, and these groups might, you know, contain 10, 20, 30 people. The real gem here with social media is you're able to access groups, you know, Alzheimer's groups, autism groups of over 10 to 20,000 people that have all interests and have affinities and deep affinities towards this industry and towards this specific niche or micro network for you're trying to target. And that's really where the value comes is you're able to select and pinpoint which group you're wanting to converse and connect with. All right. Awesome. Now, one thing I've, I've uh, been hearing a lot of buzz about, all right, and that is retargeting. All right. So how does retargeting fit in when it comes to, you know, in, in the sense of the Facebook business page, like where, where does all of this come in and how does it directly apply when we're talking about caregiver recruitment? So with retargeting, simply put, retargeting shows your ads and or your content postings to people who already know about you and your agency. So how you mentioned caregiver recruitment. So let's say you're posting content that is orientated around, let's just say caregivers, caregiver benefits. And you're having a select few people that are interacting with these posts that you're posting for caregivers. When okay. it comes to marketing, you'll be able to retarget those who have shown interest in your pages, your, your Facebook business page, and your content postings. Facebook then can also help create audiences out of people who have engaged with your posts. So a little example of that would be, again, let's use caregiver recruitment. You might find in your area that a majority of your applicants are of a certain age range, of a certain demographic, possibly even a gender. Facebook will be able to even collect that data and then build an audience that is tended towards your ideal you know, recruiter, recruitment. And that's where the retargeting comes into play on social media. Awesome. That, that's, that's really interesting. So now that actually is a good segue. Some people were kind enough to submit some questions ahead of time. So before we get into your guys' offer, and you know, which is actually pretty amazing, and a quick uh, understanding of what this Facebook audit is, let's take one of the questions from the audience. So someone asked... Uh, submitted the question, is Facebook expensive to market through? Yvonne, would you like to take that one? <laughs> I mean, Sam will show you, like, if you follow the rules and you work in a way that Facebook likes, it'll push your, your post and your, and, you know, everything to your audience, your caregivers that you want to attract. So it can be very cheap if you know how to use it. Awesome. And, and Sam has experience of how much it compares to other ways of marketing. Yeah, you know, uh, a, a quick example would be that I, I'm based in California, Los Angeles. Um, and mm -hmm. for, let me just use Google PPC or maybe Google SEO as an example. Out in California, an average home care operator is looking at paying minimum $55 to $60 per click when it comes to having a Google PPC campaign. Okay. Now with Facebook, we're seeing an average cost per click of around as low as three to $5. It's a drastic difference when it comes to marketing through social media. Mm -hmm. Again, especially in the home care field, since it is really an untapped market, since so many operators are overlooking the importance of it, there is a very cheap, very cheap marketing ad spend that can be allocated towards it since you're not competing against many people. Oh, all right. That, that's really good information to know. So it's, so the, Facebook then would be great for somebody, especially if they're a newer agency, which, you know, actually that brings us up to another great question that was brought up. Um, can I use Facebook instead of a website if I'm a new agency? Yes, you actually can. And uh, to answer or to touch on both with it being a new agency, uh, to backtrack a little bit before I answer that is, yes, you're having the opportunity to start finding out 
your niche, so to say, to collect data, to understand your marketing objectives as, as a smaller agency, as compared to having to pay for Google SEO and Google PPC. Now back to it, yes, you'd be able to utilize your Facebook page as a, a reference when you're showcasing to referral provider networks, when you're showcasing to po possible applicants, maybe to possible clients. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier because again, everyone is already on Facebook to pull up a social media page, your Facebook page and go through your photos and to understand who you are, to go through your videos. It makes it a little bit more clear. And honestly, it makes it a little bit more personal with the website, it may seem like it's hard to get in contact with you. You may need to call this number. You may need to fill out this form to reply or, or connect with them. Facebook, they can pull up a messenger and message you then and there, and you will receive it within seconds. And that's, again, the value of that. So yes, a small agency, even big agency, will be able to utilize their Facebook presence and Facebook business page as a website. Awesome, awesome. All right. So you know, uh, we have a few more questions. We can get to them a little bit uh, afterwards, but I, I don't want people to miss out on this amazing opportunity that you guys are bringing. All right. So through Augusta Home Care Recruitment, they are offering, and there's going to be a link uh, connected to, to uh, this post here. And those of you that are participating on, you know, through the webinar portion of this, you're going to receive the link uh, via email and so tell us a little bit about that. Like what, tell us about this amazing offer about this Facebook business page audit that you guys are giving. I mean, it's an opportunity. Yeah, I'll do have a quick answer to that. Um, it's an opportunity for you to learn the basics of how to set up the page so you can be successful uh, in marketing to your caregivers, right? And uh, it's like starting a relationship with us as well, because we want to learn from you what your pain points are, because at some point we're going to have a service, a full end-to-end -end service that will address your recruiting needs. And we need your help for that, like I said before. All right. Awesome. So tell us a little bit, what does the audit actually entail? Like what, what are some of the things that you guys look for when you're doing this audit? Like, you know, um, uh, we unfortunately didn't, weren't able to secure somebody that was going to come and do this live with us. But what are the what are the key elements that you guys particularly look for for what would be a successful or productive Facebook business page? Perhaps a demo would be the best. Uh, what do you think? Right. Yeah, well, yeah, if you guys uh, want to pull up a business page, just any uh, and share yeah. your screen and let, um, let's get at it. May you allow me to share my screen, Hulu? Um, oh, yes, yes. Um, all panelists. Fantastic. Fantastic. Give there me you one go. One second here. So let me share my screen now. I am pulling up my little fake mock example page. Mm -hmm. So this is a quick page I've created through, you know, a mock page so I can walk through without it, you know, messing with anyone else's. So the first thing I would be looking through here would be the cover photo. Now, obviously, this is mine, so it, it, it looks a little bit cleaner, but a majority of operators do have something like this. So you can see here how it's cut off, you know, let's say bad content or writing. I wouldn't be able to see that unless I clicked it. So the first thing, again, like I said, would just be the basic cover photo and your logo. The second would be your tabs. So a lot of operators create these Facebook pages and when they create them, they create it, create it as more of a product page or maybe a shopping page. And these tabs will always vary. So actually I would like, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to show how operators can add these tabs a lot. Please. Yeah, okay. Perfect. Yeah, the more information people can get, the better. I mean, everybody- Fantastic. Always... Yeah. So uh, one thing here, let me just show everyone how to add these tabs. And it may seem simple, it may seem small, like what is tabs gonna really do? Having these tabs give your audience or followers an opportunity to look at your job postings and service postings. Like I said, a majority of operators create these pages without optimizing their page setup. So there's no job postings and there's no service postings. Now, if you were to add these or want to, you'd click more, edit tabs, and you would then have to equip the tab. 
Most likely your job tab is here with it being off. So you would need to turn it on and drag it up. Another thing I would recommend is to prioritize your tabs. When someone does end up hopping on your Facebook business page, the first thing they're gonna look at is what are you about? So they're gonna go through your about. The second, depending on your marketing objectives of what you're pushing, it may be services or maybe jobs. And then they scroll down, go through your photos, videos, and possibly community outreach. Another tab I recommend to have, and again, you know, this might be cyclical, you know, seasonal, whatever it may be, is your offers. If you do have an aggressive offer for maybe potential uh, leads, you can offer it here, adding a tab, and then creating an offer. Now, another thing. I would recommend or what I look for when I'm doing these audits would be what do you have within these tabs? How does your job postings look and your service postings? And since today we're kind of focusing a little bit more on caregiver recruitment, I would like to walk through how this job posting looks. Now this is my fake <laughs> application. I applied to it just to have an example here, but you would go and create a job. Now, most operators create their job postings by simply typing on a Facebook page posting. So creating a post in Facebook. They mention the word job or they're hiring and then they click, oh, create job, right? It doesn't properly optimize it to showcase your business as professional, trustworthy, and reliable. So again, one thing I'd be looking here with your caregiver, I'm sorry, caregiver, your job postings would just be having a clean job posting page. I've noticed a lot of operators having 20 open positions and it can get very overwhelming. When I speak with operators- I have a question for you. Uh, yeah. Sorry, question for you. How does uh, Facebook, um, how does it work well with Facebook having the separate job tab? How does Facebook process the information and how does it help pushing yes. the ad forward to more people? So when you do create a job, so I want to keep it a little bit about jobs here. So when you do create a job and you provide full transparent information, detailed information, your pay, your service area, benefits, you know, an explanation of who you are, so on and so on, Facebook collects, memorizes, and stores the information and data you're providing for an ideal job posting. Then when someone interacts with those job postings, let's say, again, I'm a family caregiver. Let's say if I were to apply or look at these job postings and you were interested in me and you inform Facebook as marking it as interested, Facebook then develops more data and insights on your potential applicant. So they, Facebook might see that Home care example page is looking for a caregiver at this pay in this area, these benefits, and this is what they're about. And when I apply, Facebook's also learning that, oh, hey, Samuel Sanchez of this age, this location, these interests, the interest he searches up on Facebook, likes content, or is interested in applying to jobs such as this. Facebook will then take it upon its behalf to showcase and push your job postings for free. Now, you may be wondering, what do you mean by push? I actually have, I would like to uh, show another little example of how Facebook notifies people in your area of job postings. <laughs> Let me know if everyone can see this here. Yes. So this is how it notifies people in your community and those who have interacted with your job postings or have similarities to those who have interacted with your job postings. They get notified through your Facebook page personally that, hey, there are 10 jobs, one job, whatever it may be, that are in your area paying more than $17 per hour. And this is what Facebook does with the information you're giving it just by utilizing the platform properly by posting job postings, posting service postings. It informs those who have interacted with your page or may have similarities to those who have interacted with your page and continues to push it. Yeah. Mm. I believe that it's not just to go deeper into what you said about job posts, you, by using the tab, it forces you to give more information because there's all these fields that you need to fill in and it forces you to be 
giving the information in an organized fashion for Facebook to be able to create audiences and then pushing that the right post to the right people, right? So maybe like showing an example of that. That's awesome. Uh, could be yeah, shown of, of, of how to create the job in a sense. So yeah, because then you could see all the fields that are yeah. being used by Facebook and you know the applicants. I could also see this as a benefit just from an office perspective of getting people more into the mindset of creating complete and detailed job posts in general, you know, by being able to use, uh, use something like this. Yeah. Uh, so let me walk a little bit through, uh, again, just kind of a, summing up what Yvonne just said is yes, Facebook is giving you preset questions to fill so it can collect more data about you and your agency to help push and promote to those that are interested in your area. So again, how we fill this out, let's just say we're filling it out with job title. This may vary in your area. Um, in California, caregivers prefer to be referred to as home health aides, not caregivers. So that terminology would then have to be displayed here. So you put that in. Another one would be filling out the full-time and part-time positions. So if you were creating it, again, it's just having complete transparency. If you are looking for someone full-time, put it here. If you're looking for both, I suggest creating two job postings so you can make sure your data is separated when it comes for Facebook's learning. And when it comes to job description, this is where you can go into depth. Now, for operators that might not have as an aggressive pay scale for their home health aides or caregivers, this is where I inform them to, in a, in a sense, single way, inform your community of your benefits then. If you're unable to have competitive you know, hourly pay, then start explaining your benefits. Now, within this job description, I always recommend to have complete transparency not only for your applicant, but for Facebook as well. What does your job entail? What are the caregivers or home health aides going to be doing when they are hired by your agency? I've noticed a lot of operators like to keep it vague. They like just someone to apply and they explain later, but you're limiting yourself from the start when you're creating these postings. Again, the more information you can provide, the more Facebook can do for free on your end. Yeah, another way to say the same thing is that if Facebook does not understand your, your job post because it's too vague, it does not know who will be interested in it. So by providing the information, you give the tools to Facebook to find the right people for you. Yep, okay. and, and, and Ivan, uh, to add more to that, let's say if they do get a lot of you know, applications, but their posting is vague. And out of those applications, you know, you hire no one or you hire, you know, let's just say only one person out of 100. Facebook then is going to assume those are the applications you want. And so then start sending you more applicants that are not actually being hired. So again, it's making sure you have complete transparency, not only for your caregivers, but for Facebook. The more data you can provide, the more Facebook can utilize that data and push it further. So essentially, what you want to try to do is eliminate the bad applicants from your ad when you're posting it on Facebook. Yes, there's, there's, I, yeah, and I'm assuming you, you've heard this too, Julio, as well. Um, yeah. A lot of operators like to post and keep it thick so they can get the applicant in, explain from there. Right. And then, you know, you know how that goes. So this, yeah, again, you're, you're wanting to kind of mitigate the bad applicants from the start. So Facebook can learn your actual ideal applicant and to further showcase your job posting to those who have similar interests and in content, meaning the caregivers. Now, to continue with this, obviously your work location, it's not a remote job, caregiving, you're gonna be running around. I would recommend to add the vicinity. Uh, if you have an office, maybe add your office, but I'd really add kind of the city you're servicing. Now we all know you might have multiple cities you're servicing, that's fine. You can just create another job if you're trying to find a select location, but I would keep it very broad, maybe even possibly a zip code. Now for salary, uh, I wanna say this real quick. I've noticed a lot of operators applying their maximum salary. 
I think this is the only time I'll sound contradicting when I say provide as much information as you can for Facebook. Don't add your maximum salary. No one really wants to know <laughs> their hourly pay cap, how much they're going to grow and when it stops. That really scares people away. So I'd recommend just keeping your minimum salary. And again, obviously it's per hour, so keep it per hour. And this is for Facebook, not only the caregiver, but for Facebook again to learn, hey, what kind of minimum salary pay ranges are getting bites in this area or in this field. Now, as for benefits, this would go on with your salary. So with benefits, if you're not offering an aggressive pay rate compared to your competitors in your area, the benefits are where you're going to showcase that you're still offering a lucrative or beneficial exchange for hiring a caregiver. Now, what do I mean by that is, let's say someone's on Facebook searching for jobs that, you know, that are only offering $20 an hour, right? And you as a small operator may only be able to supply $17 an hour. So you may already have in your head, wow, I'm not gonna be able to you know, bid on these. I'm not gonna be able to have a presence with caregivers in my service area. This is where the benefits come in. On Facebook jobs, when people are looking, they also click what benefits they're looking for. So if they do have, hey, I'm only wanting to apply with jobs that are paying $20 or more, but they also say, hey, but I want a 401k, maybe pay time off, vision, dental, and medical, it will connect on your posting. So if they're looking for these benefits as an agency can offer, your post will still rank up regardless of your pay not meeting their requirements. So make sure that you can click these. Another reason too is these are predefined buttons that Facebook then can correlate to with your job postings. It helps you connect more, it helps Facebook learn more, and so on and so on. So moving on from that onto schedule, this again would be similar to your benefits. Now, going back up to full-time, part-time, you need to make sure that you're that. This schedule does, in a sense, does not fully correlate with the full-time and part-time. You may be hiring full-time for day shift, full-time for night shift, for weekends. So I always recommend to click those that the full-time applies to. You know, if you're only hiring day shift, that's fine, then click day shift. But if you have full-time for night shift, day shift, you know, weekends, and whatever standard business, you want to click those that all that apply. And that, again, is just so it can pop up on those that might be only looking for weekend shifts, might be only looking for night shifts, daytime, and so on. Now, another one I would recommend would be the flexible schedule. If you, as an operator, are actually holding up to your promises of offering a flexible schedule to your caregivers that are applying, this button alone will do a lot. And if you can hold up to that while explaining in your description of how you can hold up to it, it will help Facebook promote your, your page a lot more. Because again, Avon can actually elaborate a little bit on this through our, you know, our calls with caregivers. We've noticed that one of the pain points with caregivers is they're needing, not only wanting, but needing a flexible schedule. Yvonne, if you can explain a little bit on that as well with our calls. Yeah, I mean, like, I think operators would know this, right? It's always something that a lot of caregivers will ask, but a lot of them have, you know, our family caregivers, they take care of their children, their grandparents and so on. And a lot of them want a flexible schedule. And it might be hard for a smaller agency because if you have three, four clients, I mean, they want a predictable schedule, right? I want someone to come from at 8 a.m. and leave at noon or whatever it is. I, it might be hard. Like as you scale up, uh, make sure you think through how you can deliver a flexible schedule because it'll really grow the pool of applicants that you can have access to. We've met so many independent caregivers who are independent only because they can choose their schedule. It, it, and it told us, hey, if someone gave me a flexible schedule, I would consider working for a home care agency. So as you think through your, your, um, your scheduling, definitely something I would be aware of. So 
<clears throat> wanting to kind of hop back so we can finalize this would be after, you know, again, the benefits of having a flexible schedule would be inputting your hours per week. Again, you know, it might be a range. This should correlate with your full-time or part-time posting in the beginning. Again, you know, don't post full-time or don't post part-time if you're going to be requesting them at more, you know, 30 to 40 hours or more than 40 hours a week. You're going to kind of mess with Facebook's data collection. Um, and and it, it seems small, but it, it, it is very impactful. Now, another, and these are very important, would be I, all the operators refer to them as knockout questions. These are defining questions that you can create here that can help you decide immediately whether you want to hire or continue with this applicant. Now, these knockout questions might be, are you able to lift 25 pounds? Do you have a valid driver's license? Uh, are, are, you know, in some states, are you certified, depending on the certification requirements? And these questions, again, the more you can provide, I, I always suggest a solid four or five, nothing more than that, because you also have to understand that each question you do have are put up there, you're narrowing your funnel for applicants. Now, what do I mean by that? It's simply put, think if we all were to land on a page, and if we saw uh, an opt-in page for something, and it's only two questions, your name and your email. Very easy to fill out, right? But when it comes to your name, your email, you need this, you need that, explain yourself, then it becomes a little bit more intimidating and it makes it uh, less of an ease of an application. So like I said, knockout questions, you can add them here. Another one I always suggest when creating these job postings is to have one free text question. And the question would simply be, please, or a question, or it, please list your name, your number, and your email. Now, why, when they're already sending their application, is because Facebook automatic, automatically populates these applications. And let's say they're applying from a Facebook they created 10 years ago, and their emails, you know, not the exact email they're using anymore, right? Or maybe they lost a password. This is just them giving them an opportunity to reassure and to re-input the email so you as the operator or HR know that, okay, at least his email is verified and they can actually be contacted through. Now, lastly, would be adding your own email. So let's say you're like, hey, I want to do this, but I don't have the time to go through and check all these job postings on Facebook or it's overwhelming Sam and I, you know, this is too much, too much time taken out of my day. You can apply your business email. So all of those applicants that apply to this job posting are their resumes are sent directly to your email. So you can just open up your email, filter throughout those. And if you see any keywords, okay, I like this applicant. It's worth my time going on Facebook, connecting with them, getting them through our onboarding process. So this again is really for the operators that might want to just create a job posting and then step back and let it do its thing. Now, last two things here would be requiring past employment or resume. Again, always require this. Like I said, Facebook automatically populates. This is just giving your applicant another opportunity to verify and reassure that the information they're providing is up to date and correct. So always click this. And lastly, with these photos, I've noticed a lot of operators, these post these jobs without any photos. People are, you know, it's that saying, a picture says a thousand words. That's really true on social media. Operators are not share, showing or showcasing what your employees are going to be doing. And especially now with this caregiver shortage, you know, we're, everyone's fighting to get more caregivers, to get new caregivers, reaching out to people who have never been a family caregiver or have, have never even been in the home care and healthcare field. And so this is a new, a new venture for them, a new job opportunity for them. So I would always recommend for operators to post a picture of one of your caregivers, not a stock image, one of your caregivers servicing one of your clients, whether it's them just showing companionship, sitting next to each other on a chair, whether it's feeding them, whether it's, you know, basic, not changing, so to say, you don't want to show that, but basic, you know, prepping and light housekeeping, stuff like that, just to showcase that, hey, you know, this is kind of the job you're going to be doing. 
just to give them a little bit insights. Let me interrupt a little bit on that note. Yeah. Um, please, anyone who's watching this, before you do post, make sure you have the proper authorization paperwork from the client so that you don't violate HIPAA. That's all. Yep. Yep. Oh, I'll make sure you for the client and from your, your, your caregivers, make sure you have a proper photo release form when it comes to that. Again, especially with it being for job postings in a sense marketing, if you're going to end up putting ad spend behind this, Julia, you're right. Make sure you're, you're covering your butt. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and yeah, once, once you have, you know, again, you know, add a nice picture, make sure it's personalized. Maybe throw your phone number in the bottom right or left hand corner along with your logo. Mm -hmm. So let's say if they don't feel comfortable applying or this might be something that might be just too confusing for them and they want to just give you a call, they have the opportunity to call you immediately. And you know what? That just reminds me of something. I always, add, I see every operator doing this. Don't add your website careers page in here. You want them to apply through Facebook. If you are offering them another link to click, they will click it. Now you may be thinking, well, that's great. No, a majority of operators or just home, home care agencies in general uh, haven't taken the time out to properly build a funnel through their website. So you're directing someone to a careers page to apply, but then they're gonna be shown all these other you know, buttons they can click. Now they can start going through more stuff. And next thing you know, they're not, they're not no, they're no longer looking to apply. They're looking to learn more about you, which is fine. That's what we want to do. But you've taken them out of the application process and put them back into the beginning of the funnel of the showcasing process. So this is just something there I'd always recommend. Unless your page and you have proven, you know, a proven funnel for a recruitment, then I would put it but most operators don't. So just keep a phone number in there. It's perfect. And if they need any help, any person who's actually wanting to apply would have no issue giving you a call. And Sam, I believe also that it helps Facebook understand if someone goes through the funnel within Facebook, they know who dropped off. They know who completed it. They know who, so they can really fine tune their audiences for you, right? Yeah, yeah. Again, uh, Facebook's using this process, not only on your end when you're creating the job, but on the caregiver's end when they're applying to see where they can better their platform. Facebook obviously wants to make sure it's providing the highest quality of platform. So it's wanting to ensure that you as the business owner are having a great experience, but also your applicant is having a great experience. So let's say if you have someone filling out, answering these questions halfway, and then they decide to, no, I'm not good. I'm good. You know, exit out. Facebook then knows that, okay, well, they're having difficulties answering these two questions. What's stopping them? Or they answer these two questions, but not the three, the three after this. So Facebook's learning, okay, you know, there might be issues here. Let's see if we can figure it out. And you as an operator will be able to go through and see that, okay, they applied halfway and I lost them on these last two questions. Was it two invasive questions? Maybe I didn't properly, you know, properly word it. And that's where you can kind of see where the holes within your funnels might be. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Now, once this is done, you put, you know, next, the job posting would then be here. And those would be able to apply. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and there's more to cover. I mean, like, there's so much about it, about yeah, we, can you can have on Facebook. I, we could probably talk another hour, and that's why we have a full <laughs> audit for you guys. Yeah. Spend dedicated time on this, so there's so much more. Excellent. So here we are on, on our screen here. All right, so if you go to Augusta.care, these two wonderful gentlemen will walk you through all you got to do is submit your email and they will give you a full detailed audit of your Facebook business page. And now this is for home care operators only. All right. So, you know, go on there, take advantage of this. Believe me, there's a lot of companies out there that will charge you a ton and do not have the knowledge and experience of the industry that these two are giving you for free. Okay. So don't miss out on this opportunity. It's Augusta.care. Again, we're going to put the links on everything below. 
All right. And I, I really want to thank you guys for taking the time out to help educate our audience and educate the home care owners that are watching this on the not just the value of Facebook business page, but how to utilize it as an effective tool to help grow their business. I mean, I, I'm going to tell you, I, hell, I've been doing this you know, over 20 years and I learned some things about uh, the Facebook business page that I didn't even know. So fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hoyo. I really appreciate uh, the time and the opportunity to do this in front of your audience. Yeah, no, no problem. No problem. Thanks. Thanks for being here. So, all right. So as uh, just to wrap it up before we head off, you know, if you're watching this on, you know, on Facebook uh, here live with us, please uh, share it. Let as many people know. We don't want anyone to miss out on this amazing offer of a free Facebook business page audit. Uh, believe me, this does not come around every day. And if you're watching this uh, replay on our YouTube channel or listening to our podcast and listen to the audio, don't forget to uh, you know, share this, give us a like, leave us a comment, let us know what you think. How, did you find this valuable? Did, did, you, did you happen to learn something today? I know I sure did. You know, and you know, we look forward to having you guys back on again once your product is launched and everything is you know, ready to go and ready to rock and see how we can help as many home care businesses you know, grow as quickly as possible. Thank you so much. All I right. appreciate it. Thank you very much. Laura. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. And we'll see you guys uh, next time.